So this particular resource is always very, very fascinating for me, and I'm sure you're all familiar with the utility of magnesium, especially if optimizing your masculine characteristics is of importance to you. Now, magnesium is often described or referred to as the mineral of relaxation. It is somewhat different in terms of its functionality of many of the alternative supplements that I may have promoted on this channel or previously discussed. As prefaced, its role is more valued in its mitigation of cortisol and fundamentally our stress response. So just a very quick reminder on how this works. You should all be familiar with cortisol or I suppose more specifically pregnenolone steel. So this is a process which describes a priority response from the body when in chronic stress context. The priority being cortisol. This steals, steals uh, pregnenolone, which is a precursor hormone, away from the production of other hormones like DHEA and more specifically testosterone. As a result, levels of these other hormones will decrease and cortisol begins to increase. Now we can't have that. Magnesium is of value because it influences the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. The cortisol response through two distinct ways. So the first is the regulation of neurotransmitters GABA, which relaxes the body, and serotonin, which promotes a positive mood. The second is a prioritization of a certain enzyme, which I'll probably put on screen here, um, that converts cortisol to the inactive conversion, which is cortisone. Now there's an excellent long-term study done on the enzyme at 350 milligrams of magnesium for 24 weeks with the placebo group. And it demonstrates significant increase in its activity, meaning that cortisol is being moved to its inactive form, cortisone. And this implications are huge, not just for testosterone, but cardiovascular diseases or to be honest, any stress or cortisol-induced problems. Inflammation is a word you wanna become familiar with, hopefully not too familiar with. Now, magnesium is also an instigator of luteinizing hormone production, our precursor to testosterone via the leading cells in our testicles. We should also attribute magnesium's value to protein synthesis, meaning it is a cofactor in over 300 uh, enzymatic processes that are crucial for lean mass development, which also indirectly affects our testosterone levels. Antioxidant properties equally come hand in hand with magnesium supplementation. Now this helps the maintenance of oxidative stress, which is a killer for tea production. Now here's the most important part in, in this video in my estimation. The confusion for me has always been, there's so many variances, there's so many different varieties of magnesium which manifests itself. So here in short is a kind of end to all of those queries if like me you understand the importance of magnesium but you've, you've never elucidated yourself from the differences of benefits in each individual form. So we'll talk about the first one is magnesium citrate. Now this is a very popular variation of magnesium. The citrate aspect refers to citric acid, which creates a highly soluble compound that is more easily absorbed by the body than other variations. The decision for you to choose citrate over other forms of magnesium is motivated by how quickly you need it. Being more bioavailable than other forms of magnesium, it shows value in alleviating muscle cramps and tension whilst soothing the nervous system. Now, I have in the past opted for citrate post-workout context, though not something I've you know, personally had problems with in terms of recovering and cramps and all the aforementioned things. The literature further recommends uh, citrate over other choices as long as you have the stomach for it, as it alleviates uh, constipation. So if post-workout tension and anxiety coupled with the need to void your bowels quickly is a predicament for you or that you frequently find yourself in, citrate seems to be the more logical choice. Now magnesium glycinate, glycinate for the combination of the amino acid glycine, which has a reputation for protein synthesis, creatine synthesis, and also sleep improvements. Uh, you can also include muscle preservation 
and to be honest, a whole host of other health benefits in that particular equation. I, I, I like this one. Similarly to citrate, actually, glycinate is highly bioavailable, but more soothing on the digestive tract. As per the relationship with the amino acid glycine, the variation of magnesium is chosen because of its impacts on sleep. In fact, individuals who suffer from uh, insomnia or general, you know, generally getting um, or find it difficult to get to sleep are usually signposted to glycine. Individuals who take this approximately one hour before bed are known to report significant alleviations in anxiety and experience a soothing relaxation state. So you can imagine this is a very popular form of magnesium. And to be transparent with you, it's typically the form I find myself ta taking magnesium in the most, more than any other anyway. But here is another one that you may be familiar with. Guys as well, please drop your experiences with some of these variations because I'm also very interested to see. I just get the, the scientific literature, but I do love an anecdote. So magnesium l 3 innate. This variation is unique in that it is the only variation of magnesium which has some clinical merit in cognitive enhancement as opposed to the others. So this composes of a mineral uh, salt bound to L-threonic acid. Its function varies from the rest due to its ability to cross the blood-brain barrier effectively, essentially increasing the levels of magnesium in the brain, hence the cognitive enhancement. So the potential benefits of this phenomenon lie in enhancements in learning memory perception due to the consequence of neuronal plasticity. There is also some claims that L3 and 8 could increase brain-derived neurotrophic factor levels, so BDNF, further supporting the cognitive output and the brain health long term. I have dabbled with uh, 3 and 8, no, not so much recently, but uh, as I make this video and as I write my book, this is an interesting one. This, this is a cool one. The next one is uh, magnesium tolerate, the combination of magnesium and the amino acid taurine. Uh, is what we understand by magnesium tortrate. Now, I will speak separately on taurine in a different video. However, what makes tortrate different to other forms of magnesium is, is its uh, unique effects on the cardiovascular system. So more specifically, this comes about due to its vasodilation effects on the blood vessels, helping lower blood pressure and improve overall blood flow. There is a whole host of um, other data on heart rhythm regulation, antioxidant properties, reduced inflammation and endothelial function to help prop up this particular uh, point. Therefore, it seems you know, very logical and rational to me that the bound version of magnesium would make sense to those wishing to see improvements in their overall cardiovascular health as well. Magnesium sulfate. Now, some of you may be familiar with this. So any athlete you might better understand this as your Epsom salts, commonly used in bath salts. This version work, works typically more topically on the skin, though there is some contention about the rate of magnesium absorption through the skin. There are some anecdotes reporting benefits for delayed onset muscle soreness, so your DOMS after intense exercise. I've personally used this in the past throughout you know, higher education sports, namely football, rugby, and judo, judo to um, greater recovery effect but not so much in the last five years or so. Now, to be honest, that is the more popular ones that you will be exposed to. Though I will argue that maybe use of magnesium chloride, which is another topical version like sulfate for more similar outcomes. You can also talk about malate, which is used to prescribe more chronic conditions like fibromyalgia, which I have ambivalence towards, but we'll talk about that later. And oxide is also good for heartburn, constipation, and general indigestion. But what about the benefits? What about the outcomes, Joseph, on masculine characteristics? It has been observed that higher levels of magnesium concentrations reduce the attraction between testosterone and the bound sex hormone binding globulin, meaning more bioavailable testosterone. This is especially significant as we get older, as more testosterone is kind of captured and stolen by SHBG. In a pioneering study, researchers delved into the influence of magnesium on total testosterone production, shedding light on its role in strength development among uh, men. 
Over the course of seven week double blind trial, 12 participants received magnesium supplements, while 14 others were given uh, placebos as a control. Now these subjects were put through a uh, rigorous regimen of leg presses and uh, extensions, performing these at a set to rep ratio of three to 10 three times per week. As you can imagine, both groups experienced gains in muscle mass and performance. However, the findings revealed a striking boost in testosterone levels among those who, you guessed it, supplemented with magnesium, underscoring, underscoring its potential impacts. So as a classification, I would put magnesium in A tier, in S tier, S tier with uh, specific mentions to uh, glycine, and also three and eight. Citrate is good as well. I don't think you can, you can go wrong there. And I, I really believe it's, a, it's an essential. Let me know what magnesium formats you are taking, gentlemen, but these are no theories, these are facts. Speak soon.